Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of a couple of different scenarios involving Freddy and Jimmy. Okay, and Freddy's a cat, and uh, Jimmy's a, a younger boy on a skateboard, and um, they they have a whole history. It's it's a whole thing. I I mean I. I could go into it, but I, it, it doesn't really matter here. But let, let's just say there's no love lost with Freddie and Jimmy. And, and so our situation here is that, you know, Freddie is, uh, sorry, Jimmy is skateboarding along. Okay. And um, so let's draw. Uh, whoops. Just kidding. Okay. Skateboarder guys always seem to wear their heads backwards. Uh, their, <laughs> their hats. <laughs> so here's Freddie. On a skateboard, woo! Okay, and um, then uh, that's Jimmy. Okay, and then the cat here likes to fall on his head. Okay, and um, so let's go ahead and get some information on here. The mass of Freddy the cat is just five, but the mass of Jimmy is forty-five. Okay, now. Right here, okay, it's just before the collision, okay? And so what I'm interested in is the X velocity of the two. So I can say V Freddy initial is zero, but V Jimmy initial is a three, okay? Just like that. And then we're gonna have an after, okay, after the collision. Okay, so now we've got um, Jimmy, and he is being accosted by the cat, like so. Okay, so now they are um, now they are stuck together. Okay, so they have a combined mass, and they both have the same velocity. So let's call it. Um, um, what did I call it in my notes here? Trying to make sure I got the right, the right thing going up. And I'm missing my notes for Freddie and Jimmy. That's not cool. Three, four. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Hang on. I'm gonna pause this. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. I found him. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> I, I wanted to make sure I was consistent with my notes. So I don't switch. I, I, I don't want to switch notation in the middle of working this problem for you because that can be really confusing. Okay, so in, uh, what I chose to call it was uh, FJ. Okay, so FJ. And we do not know what that is. In fact, that's our goal. Okay, now let's talk about the fact that Freddy is, is actually falling down. Okay. So we, we could think about this as, as, as a collision vertically and a collision horizontally. Okay. So horizontally, uh, the cat has no momentum. Freddy's got momentum. They're both going to end up moving together. We have a sticky collision. Okay. Vertically, what's going on here is we have another collision, uh, and it's a sticky collision. But the thing is, we are the uh, Freddy is colliding into Jimmy, who's in contact with the Earth. So if we want to deal with what's happening vertically, we have to make the system we're dealing with much larger. OK, and if Freddy crashes into the Earth, uh, that, that's not going to change <laughs> the, the velocity of, of the Earth. OK, um, there, there's no way uh, to measure that. Okay, and, and there's a good chance there's a cat on the other side of the planet who is doing the same thing on the other side and they'll cancel each other out. So these sort of, these sort of vertical collisions like this, they're not going to matter uh, when it comes to the motion of the Earth, and they're certainly not going to matter um, in our calculation here. Okay, so we're going to ignore the fact that he's, he's dropping down like this, okay? So watch out for that. However fast he's going there doesn't really matter, okay? So if, you know, if we, if I got really tricky on you and I said the, you know, Freddy drops down, has a speed of five meters per second, 
okay, don't don't panic figuring out what to do with the five because the five is vertical and that doesn't matter at all. Okay, that's 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 just a little bit of trickery. So watch out for that. All right. So how do we move forward here? So we got our sketch, We've got all of our information there. We got velocities we know. We've got mass values. We got our before. We got our after. Now we're ready to move to our momentum equation, and so we're going to write it out here. So initial momentum is the final momentum. Okay, so we're going to conserve. And so we have the mass of Jimmy, velocity of Jimmy initial, plus the mass of Freddie, velocity of Freddie initial. And that has to be equal to the mass of Jimmy plus the mass of Freddie, because they're combined, times their speed as they move together like that okay now um freddy's initial speed is zero so we're just going to dump that thing right there now i'm going to go ahead and, and do some algebra and again you know if you want to pause the video and take some time you i expect you to be able to do this algebra i'm not going to take the time to write it all out for you here because you guys are all smart people you can figure that out okay but if i just go ahead and solve for what i'm interested in the velocity of fj okay then what i'm going to end up with is um vj initial mj divided by mj plus mf okay now again what i did with my algebra my final answer there i've i've grouped things together kind of by units okay um so that when I get ready to plug in my numbers, this is what happens. I get 3 meters per second. And then uh, Jimmy is 45 kilograms. And then I've got 45 kilograms plus 5 kilograms down there like that. And so what happens is all those guys cancel each other out and all I'm left with is meters per second. Okay, so that's a super easy way to do it. Now, the other nice thing about that is then you can begin to play games and you can say, well, what, what, if, what if the mass of Freddy got smaller and smaller and smaller? Okay, if Freddy gets smaller and smaller and smaller, okay, he's a... Uh, He's a five kilogram cat, which is like 11 pounds, by the way. So it's, Freddy's a big, he's a big kitty. Okay. But, it, you know, if it were to get smaller and smaller, maybe Freddy's a gerbil. Okay. With a mass of 20 grams <laughs> or something like that. Um, then you can see it begins to become, to, to not even matter, right? Not even matter. Okay, and we're left with MJ over MJ, and Freddy doesn't even realize anything's happened, okay, um, until he feels some scratching on the top of his head. Okay, now, I actually experienced this one time, um, not, not with, from a cat or a gerbil landing on my head, but uh, I lived in Seattle uh, for three years, and I was riding the bus one day, and it was a big bus. I don't know if you guys have ever seen... There's some buses they they can, they can hinge like this, okay? So not a regular bus, but a, a giant freaking giant bus. And I was in the back and we were cruising along and we were headed towards we were headed northbound on this particular road and there was bumper to bumper traffic, okay? Basically traffic was at a standstill except we had a separate lane on the outside, okay? So imagine there's Two lanes go on one way and two lanes go on the other. There's a turn lane in the middle. Okay. Well, there's actually a bus lane over here on this side. And that's where we were. Okay. So what happened was some fool here in the turn lane decided they needed to cut left across all this traffic. Okay. And then some other fool decided, oh, I'm going to be real nice and I'll stop for you. And I'm sure they waved and everything. And then finally, a third fool joined in and said, hey, yeah, I'll stop too. And then this first fool was like, oh, thanks, everybody. We love each other. And they were like, here. And then the bus came and plowed into him and totaled that car. So all those people trying to be nice almost got somebody killed. Fortunately, uh, nobody got hurt. But 
I was in the bus and we hit this small car. Okay. And the bus mass, it was a sticky collision and the mass of the bus was so much greater than the car that to us inside the bus, we thought we'd hit a speed bump. I mean, we didn't even rock forward in our chairs. It was just kind of like, quonk, what the heck was that? And we were all looking at each other. And then we realized, you know, we, we could see what had happened. Um, and uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, the bus driver got out, you know, made sure everybody was okay. Um, he probably called the police an ambulance or whatever. Uh, and then he got back in the trust, the bus and drove off. We were fine. But that little car was totaled, uh, you know, but again, luckily nobody got injured. But that was exactly the case that I'm talking about down here where, um, you know, the mass of the car was so small compared to the mass of the bus, it made almost no impact on our motion there. OK, so um, anyway, ever since then, when I see people being really nice and letting people go through and stuff with the traffic, uh, so part of me is just like, it's not safe. It's not, that's not smart. Okay. Now let's, while we're here, let's look the other way a little bit. Okay. Um, what, I mean, what if, what if this was, instead of being smaller and smaller, what if it's bigger and bigger? Okay. If it gets bigger and bigger, then you can see what's going to happen with my ratio here is it's going to start to go down. Okay. It's going to start, start to go down. And if uh, yeah, it's, anyway, you, you can see there, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna shrink that thing down. Okay. So then we could talk about collisions with the earth and that, that sort of thing, except in this case, it'd be the earth colliding into something smaller, which would be weird, but okay. So let's get a number on that thing. All right. I've talked a lot about it. Our number on that baby is 2.7 here. meters per second. Okay. Just like that. So that would be their combined collision and the speed in the end. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this scenario. You know what? I actually, I'm going to, it's going to be super long. And so if I put these two things together, we're going to do another Freddie and Jimmy coming up next. Okay.